Legend has it the captain of the Australian men's cricket team was the second most important position in the country behind the Prime Minister. From five days to 50 overs to 20 overs, the game has certainly changed. Now it's women setting records. India is in charge globally and there are questions about the sport's relevance to large sections of the Australian community. Hello, I'm Tracy Holmes. This week on The Ticket, we ask what is cricket's place in a post-COVID Australian sporting landscape? It once dominated the summer, but cricket is now facing increasing competition from sports like basketball and soccer. Jack Snape reports on how the game is trying to find new fans. Australia may have won last year's women's 2020 World Cup final at the MCG, but perhaps the biggest victory was off the field. 86,174 piled into the MCG today. Outstanding. Times, however, have changed. Cricket couldn't escape COVID cancellations. Participation dropped almost a quarter and match income halved. People have become quite comfortable watching um, sport on TV. So just, um, you know, that getting that hook to, to get them back into the stadium is, is going to be a challenge. But there is undeniable promise. Women's Big Bash League ratings are up 58% this year amid a women's cricket boom. This is not the time to take the foot off the accelerator with those sorts of things. It's almost time to double down on them. A host of Indian stars are playing in the WBBL for the first time this season and it's meant a whole new level of exposure. NRL Premiership winner Nathan Cleary has about the same number of followers on Instagram as Shafali Verma, the Sydney Sixers Indian opener, aged just 17. Verma's opening partner for India, Shruti Mandana, who is playing with the Sydney Thunder, she's just topped 5 million. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, more than the challenge, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good time to play out there uh, and uh, get some games. Players of South Asian backgrounds in Australian teams like Usman Khawaja or the retired Lisa Stalaker will drive local growth according to Parvan Lutra, Chief Executive of Indian Link Media. If we have more people of Indian origin or people of colour on the field, that is going to bring in more spectators also over a period of time. As with the old female adage that you can't be what you can't see, um, the same thing applies um, in cricket that has probably been a traditional um, Anglo-Saxon sport. One of the challenges for all sports is really that um, there is just so much entertainment available, whether it's um, you know, your Netflix uh, and your streaming services or, or your gaming and your esports. It's become a competition for eyeballs. Looking ahead, there's the men's and women's Ashes this summer and then a men's T20 World Cup in Australia later next year. Which could really be the first truly global sporting event that is held in Australia post this pandemic. We want to make sure as cricket we get that right. Maintaining the magic as cricket starts a new spell. Jack Snape, ABC News. Back in 2019, before COVID hit, Sport Australia's National Participation Survey found the top 10 activities for adults were recreational walking, going to the gym, athletics, swimming, cycling, bushwalking, yoga, soccer, golf and tennis. For children, it was swimming, soccer, gymnastics, dancing, basketball, Aussie rules, netball, tennis, athletics and cricket. The CEO of Cricket Australia is Nick Hockley. Nick, where do you see cricket's position in the national sporting landscape right now? Cricket enjoys such a rich history. It's part of the fabric of um, our national culture and, and identity. Um, I think um, it's done a remarkable job of not only celebrating and protecting the rich heritage that you talk about, but also being extremely, extremely progressive. So if we think about you know, T20 cricket, we think about the Big Bash, the WBBL. You know, the, the, the Big Bash is only a decade old um, and certainly cricket has never been more gender equal. And I think we've played a leading role uh, in that respect on, on the international stage. So I think, you know, I think cr cricket is in great shape. Uh, I think we've a very clear vision, which is to be, be a sport for all. And um, you know, that, that drives everyone across the game. We're, we're really keen to be as, as inclusive and as welcoming um, as we, we possibly can. And I think with Australia's cha changing population, um, you know, I firmly believe um, that can cricket can be something that uh, so many people share a common love for and um, can, can really help um, bring together people across the community. 
I want to talk more about diversity, but first, if we can look at the women's game, in your census recently, registrations had dropped about 24% because of COVID, but the registrations for women had gone up by more than 17%. How do you plan to capitalise on that? Um, in the last project I worked on before assuming this role was um, the, the T20 World Cup, um, and that was a really, you know, a moment where the entire sport pulled together to try to imagine what it, what is possible and will always be privileged to have held the last major event um, before COVID. So 87,000 people um, at, the, at the MCG. Um, we were really worried at the time that, you know, we had this amazing, amazing event, which was all about inspiring um, little girls and little boys to pick up a bat and ball, that the, the, the momentum would slow. But so to see an increase, um, as you say, 17.5% uh, more girls playing uh, Woolworths Cricket Blast and, and junior, junior Cricket last, last season, taking out, out any of the impacts of, of COVID is just great vindication that, you know, if you, if you focus and you invest, then we, the, the more girls will, 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 will pick, up, pick up the sport. Um, you know, and I think we've also seen just uh, great growth in, um, in, in, in media coverage. And you know, I think the more people that play um, or the more people that watch, the more people that play. And it is a, a virtuous, a virtuous um, cycle. And it's wonderful to see, you know, the young talent coming through. There's a substantial part of the Australian population now that doesn't see themselves represented at the elite level. Is that one of the top issues that needs to be addressed? I think it's an issue and I think it's an opportunity. And I think, um, you know, cricket wants to be the most uh, welcoming sport and we want to be truly reflective of, of the community we serve. And I think we saw from the, the 2015 Cricket World Cup just how the um, really the diaspora communities within Australia turn out to support um, their teams. You know, I think um, we saw it again for the India series uh, last year. And I think... Um, you know, the opportunity is for uh, the entire cricket ecosystem, and it is a, a complex ecosystem as between, you know, uh, state bodies, clubs, um, associations and, and the national governing body and our pathways. I think our opp opportunity is to make sure that we're truly representative of uh, the community we serve at, at every, every single level. And, um, you know, certainly that, that is something we're very focused on. Um, I'm having uh, lots of um, discussions with with Usman Khawaja. Um, you know, our elite playing group are so passionate about seeing the game grow and, and be sustainable. Um, and so I know it's something that Usman is ex extremely um, passionate passionate about. Uh, and it'll cert it's certainly going to be a big focus um, as we go forward. I think it's it's two things. I think it's it's relationships, and I think it's representation. And um, you know, I think it, it's making sure, as I said, that, you know, I think at a club level, but also, you know, our administrative um, level would be that at state or, or national level, that we are truly representative of the community we serve. And that's about making sure that we've, um, you know, we've got really uh, diverse um, work, workforces. There's, a, there's no doubt there's a huge amount of, of pa passion there. I think there's a, a great, great intent with, within, within the game. You know, I think we can't, we, we can't rest until we, we've just got to keep build, building those relationships at, at every single level. The rise of India as a cricket superpower goes beyond the pitch. India now flexes its muscle politically and financially, exerting control over the game in a way that is arguably more influential than any other nation in any other sport. ESPN cricket journalist Anisha Ghosh is with us. Anisha, how do you view the impact of India being the beating heart of the game? It's been that beating heart that you just spoke of uh, for a while now. And the IPL has had a major role to play in the BCCI becoming uh, the financial behemoth that it has become, along with the other two parts of um, what we have come to know as the big three, uh, the ECB and the CA, of course. No longer are we just dealing with international schedules. The IPL plays a huge role in terms of how cricket boards across the world um, keep their players available and the players themselves train them, themselves and uh, get their personal cal calendars ready. Though the BCCI possesses the kind of power it does 
uh, and will continue to wield it as long as the IPL continues to grow and be it through viewership numbers, uh, sponsorships. It is a giant that will just keep growing. But uh, what the one aspect that the BCCI still wouldn't be that leader it should have already been by now is women's cricket. I think that is where Cricket Australia are, uh, you know, leagues ahead. They are light years ahead in terms of the infrastructure that they've made available. Women's cricket in Australia is the area of growth. What about in India, which has had big crowds, but what about interest in broadcasting and in sponsorship? There was a 364-day gap that came about after India finished runners-up in Australia against Australia at the 2020 T20 World Cup. So that speaks volumes about a national team especially when their men's counterparts uh, go on tours, play the IPL. But for a team to not play for close to a year, especially after having finished runners-up at the previous uh, two of the you know, major events in, within a window of four years, that speaks, uh, if not volumes, at least to some extent, about um, about the intent around developing the women's game. In terms of broadcast figures around women's cricket, the 2020 Women's T20 Challenge that was held in the UAE along the sidelines of the IPL threw up encouraging numbers because that was also the first time the BCCI officially came out with numbers stating that the Women's T20 Challenge was, and I quote, financially viable, financially independent. There is appetite for consumption of women's sport. There is appetite for consumption of women's cricket. But there is not as much efforts being made to capitalize on that appetite. Look, I know it's a cliche, but cricket in India is often described as a religion. Is cricket influential enough to be able to make societal changes, such as encouraging inclusion and embracing diversity? Cricket has always been that unifying force in a country like India. We, uh, we worship cricketers way more than we have worshipped some of the gods, I believe. And as long as it's seen as such a cohesive force that can help eradicate whatever differences exist or whatever your differences are coming to the fore uh, for whatever reasons, at the end of the day, it's... It's a Mohammed Siraj playing alongside a Virat Kohli. So it's a microcosm. It's a slice of India being represented on the field. So how does cricket compare to other sports when it comes to spectators, media partnerships, funding and gambling? Matthew Reeves is an industry analyst with international research firm Ibis World. So Matthew, with the intel that you have there, where does cricket sit in relation to other sports? Yeah, so uh, we can look at this in two different ways. Uh, so at the participation level, uh, sport, the latest data from Sports Australia shows that uh, childhood participation in cricket uh, has fallen in recent years and is now cricket now ranks as the 10th most participated in sport amongst children. But then if you look at it at, at television ratings point of view, then we've actually seen quite strong ratings both both at the test level and at the T20 level. I guess it's really difficult to work out what is COVID impacted and what might be other reasons. But do you see any um, distinct post-COVID uh, issues that cricket will need to deal with? Lockdowns have come at a bad time for getting children registered for sports. We're getting into that season now where cricket, cricket is starting and children will be registered. And now with especially Victoria and New South Wales, the two most popular states, having those Having the COVID restrictions in place has impacted uh, will, uh, has impacted over the last twelve months, and likely going forward, getting children registered for the upcoming season. And I know that you've looked very closely at gambling. A lot of sports now making more and more of their money from that percentage of gambling that they get that they can reinvest into the sport. But where does cricket sit in terms of gambling interest? Yes, so in Australia, over $12 billion uh, is spent by, by Australians on sports gambling. And looking at, if you look, look at all across all the different sports, uh, cricket ranks about the sixth most popular at, uh, for gambling. Matthew, really appreciate your insights today. Thanks for joining us.
No worries. Thanks for having me on. And that's all for the program. I'll see you next time.